Yes, hello colleagues. Uh, we are going to look at the urgency of digital pedagogy training and the key principles of digital learning in this session. So um, you'll allow me to share my screen as we understand uh, these key different elements. Yes. So we want to look at the urgency of digital pedagogy training and why it is a matter of importance to us as instructors in this day and time. So before we even go any further, um, we want to look at what digital means in terms of teaching pedagogy, and then we can understand the definition of digital pedagogy and then its key principles. So firstly, we want to look at what digital means. So digital refers to the use of technologies in teaching and learning. Uh, this is related to in terms of teaching. And it simply means digital is the use of technologies in teaching and learning. Then pedagogy, we look at pedagogy. Pedagogy is the method and practice of teaching. So when you put those two words together, um, we form the word digital pedagogy, which is it basically refers to the use of technology uh, in teaching and learning. Method of using technology in teaching and learning. So now that we know um, what digital pedagogy means, we want to see the key practices that can enable us as, as an instructor to have um, going forward to have a good pedagogy mindset. It's very important that we understand these issues uh, before we apply them because um, each of the issues hinges on the other. You have to understand one concept to enable you to um, be able to provide the best facilitation for students online, even online and even offline. The principles uh, do not differ that much. So we're saying the first um, very important practice is having the right mindset. Uh, digital pedagogy revolves around so much having a proper mindset to deliver online learning. You have to be ready in your mind as a teacher, as a, as a learning facilitator to embrace technology in your teaching methods. You have to know that um, these tools are there to, uh, to complement learning, to aid learning, and to also enable learners have the right control and even have the right creativity as they go through their learning process. So we're saying the mindset is actually the most important factor when dealing with digital pedagogy. Because as a teacher, you are not ready to accept technology, to test out different tools, to design activities where your learners will, um, will foster creativity and come up with different solutions. Then I'm afraid, um, you will not have the best uh, journey going forward. So it's very important to get that in our mind that we need to embrace technology, we need to have the idea that uh, this is good for us and it will only enhance the learning process of our learners. Uh, do you have any questions on this? If I proceed. Okay. No, please, we can proceed. Pardon? We can proceed. Okay, thank you. Yes, secondly, um, another very important factor is exploring and choosing the right technology and tools to integrate into your teaching methods. Uh, as we continue to see in digital pedagogy, there are so many tools that we can use as facilitators to develop learning material, to collaborate with each other. And it is from those tools that we require the skill to pick the best tool that will enable different functionality at a different time. So the skill of knowing which tool will bring out a certain outcome or objective is very important for a teacher in digital pedagogy because um, it, will it will open you to very many various tools which some are even paid for, some are free, some have different limitations. So 
the skill set of exploring different tools and picking the right tools, first of all, to, get, to give to your learners, maybe to, in, in assessment or in um, assignments, but even to you as yourself with designing different um, simulations, activities that can help improve the learning process. Any question on this? Yes, I have a question, Andy. Yes, please. Can you, can you give us some of the examples of these tools? Um, okay, we have uh, tools, let's say like for graphics. I'll give an example of graphics. We have Canva, we have Sparkpost, uh, we have GIMP, um, Photoshop. So you'll find that um, you have different tools for designing graphics and each tool has its own characteristics, which maybe may have one limitation over the other. For example, I'll give the example of uh, Canva. Canva is an online tool for designing graphics. But um, maybe your students may not may have, uh, majority of your students may have an internet access problem. And this tool may be a limitation to them creating graphics. And you cannot say because uh, internet is an issue, it, it stops them from creating graphics because you have offline tools like Adobe Photoshop uh, that can also help them in uh, designing graphics. Have I answered you? Yes, thank you. Me too, I have one question. Okay. Yes, my question is that, uh, for example, if I want to do online teaching, which best tool would you recommend and in which method? Uh, those teaching methodologies you talked about. Thank you. Okay, good question. Um, the best teaching uh, platform platform to use for online teaching. That's what you're asking. Um, okay. Um, we, we are going to see that um, it is not having one exact tool, but having, let's say, a variety of tools that you can use in different instances. Of course, there are tools that have an edge over the other, but for online learning, um, I'll probably say Zoom, Zoom and even uh, Google. Google Meet are very good um, tools for online learning, for interfaces for online learning, because uh, they offer much more functionality like annotations, uh, video, the webcam, people are able to raise their hands, uh, give in input, and you even have the benefit of a recording. So I would say Zoom uh, and Google Meet, but um, don't be locked up in those tools because I've recommended them. There are also very many other tools that can still enable learning, like Big Blue Button you know, for those mathematics, mathematics, science kind of, of uh, meetings, even Big uh, Blue Jeans. There are also very many tools that can enable online learning. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll proceed to the, the next slide, which is uh, creating a learner-centered teaching environment to foster creativity, expression, and innovation from learners. Uh, I would like to say this is very key in digital pedagogy. It's very important um, as a teacher, you set up your class with different activities that are going to enable learners to go out there and think create and innovate. Uh, with this kind of learning, uh, it's mainly self-paced, whereby the students or your learners have access to a reading material prior to coming to the classes. And therefore, the class should not be only a place where instructors deliver content, because we want to see as much involvement of learners in the learning process and through designing the right adequate learning activities. Let's say it could be through presentation, demonstration. Um, the digital pedagogy course has further sessions that explain this, but creating a learner centered environment that fosters creativity and expression for new learners is very important. Yes, Bernard, your hand is raised.
Sorry about the hand. I think I touched it there accidentally. I wanted to text Haman Nyanzi. Thank you. Oh, okay. So this was my last slide in regards to digital pedagogy and the key practices of digital learning. I'd like to take any questions from this. We thank you for the presentation. It was a nice. Thank you. So, okay, just a quick take home um, from this. I would love to see from from this session that we have just had on the edges of digital pedagogy. How how ready are you as an instructor going forward? How are you going to prepare yourself? Uh, for online teaching and learning. That will be my take home from this session for you. I beg your pardon, Eddie. I didn't hear you very well. Oh, man, I didn't hear that well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. How many you have a message? <laughs>